A very warm welcome to this, the 7.30 morning service of St. Andrew's Cathedral on this, the fifth Sunday after Easter. Also, a blessed Mother's Day to all mothers and grandmothers. There will be no congregational singing, but please rise for the introit hymn, O Worship the King. Sisters, the Lord be with you. Together we will now pray the collect of purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. Please sit or kneel as you are able 
as we now search our hearts and humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as a people forgiven by God, let us now rise as we say together the Gloria in Excelsis. the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please remain standing as we read the Collect for the fifth Sunday after Easter together. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and give more than we either deserve, desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which we are not worthy, save through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please sit for the reading of Scripture. The scripture reading is taken from the 55th chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning at verse 1. Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 2. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gradual hymn, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. Jesus, I'm 
The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So, the fish, so also the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our, Lord. our Lord. Church, please be seated. We are meeting in very unusual circumstances today with the tighter restrictions and also with smaller numbers and uh, reverting back to being unable to have congregational singing but nevertheless, we rejoice and we praise God that we can gather in this manner to worship Him, isn't it? Please join me as we look to God in prayer. Father, we pray and ask for your presence to be in this place. Speak to us, we ask. Let your Holy Spirit reveal what is on your heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. This morning, we are going to look at the feeding of the 5,000, a very familiar story for many of us. It is one of the two miracle accounts that was recorded in all four Gospels, the other being the resurrection of our Lord. Each account of the miracle has a unique focus. And for the Gospel of John, the author's focus is for his readers to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, we may have eternal life. John 20, 30, verse 30 to 31. And to examine the topic for this morning, we will look at the three groups of people and their responses in the feeding of the 5,000. Firstly, we'll look at the crowd. The crowd saw the signs but did not believe. Verse 2 tells us a large crowd was following Jesus because they saw the signs, the miraculous signs. And friends, we can be in frenzy and or in danger of chasing after miraculous signs or people who perform these miraculous signs, but do not believe in the one behind the signs. In recent years, we have seen many overseas ministers and um, te Bible teachers teaching at healing conferences, and people pay expensive fees to attend. And I have nothing against that. But I've also come across people who attended these conferences to experience the miracles, but to not believe. And we see a similar situation here in the feeding of the 5,000. Verse 14, when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, 
This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Despite having witnessed how Jesus had fed the 5,000, the crowd did not believe that Jesus was the divine Son of God. Instead, they came to their own conclusion that Jesus was merely the prophet that perhaps Moses had prophesied about in Deuteronomy 18. And that would put Jesus the same or equal to Elijah or Elisha. And that they thought that God had sent Jesus as the prophet leader to lead them on a political conquest to overthrow the Roman Empire. And it was for that reason that our Lord withdrew to the mountain by himself. In verse 15, when he realized that the crowd was going to take him by force and to make him their king, the crowd saw the signs but did not believe. Secondly, we'll look at the disciples. The disciples saw the signs but operated with a myopic faith. Verse 5, seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread? so that these people may eat. In other gospel accounts, we were told that it was getting late and they were in a remote place and the disciples had asked the Lord to dismiss the crowd in the remote uh, and so that they could go and find food for themselves. And instead, Jesus instructed them, you give them something to eat. But here in John's Gospel, Jesus turned his attention to Philip and asked him, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And we were told in verse 6 that Jesus had said this to to test Philip, for he himself knew what he would do. Let's pause for a moment. Imagine for a while that you're reading this miracle account for the first time in your life. And you have read earlier that the disciples were with Jesus when he turned water into wine, and the disciples were with him when he was healing the sick. What would you expect then, the disciples, to answer the Lord's request? I believe for many of us, we would expect the disciple to answer with great faith to believe that Jesus would do something even more miraculous. But that was not so. We look at the response of Philip in verse 7, when he said, Lord, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a litter. 200 denarii is half a year's wages, and the problem was twofold. Firstly, they did not have those money. And secondly, Philip lamented that even if they did, it would not be enough to feed everyone. People would still go hungry. Philip's knowledge and assessment of the situation was accurate. However, his faith in the Lord was myopic. He limited Jesus' divine ability and power. And despite having witnessed all the miracles that the Master had carried out all this while, He operated with this myopic faith. And there he was, Philip was thinking that whatever he had to put in Jesus' hand would not be enough for each one to get a litter. And now we look at Andrew's response in verses 8 to 9. Andrew reported that it's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. And listen to this. He said, but what are they for so many? Did Andrew do any better? No. Lord, I know that you can perform great miracles, but there are just too many mouths here for you to feed. Andrew, too, limited the divine ability and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, in the first place, we need to know that God does not need us or anything from us for him to carry out his miracles and we need to get that right Jesus could have just commanded heaven to rain down manna on that very day but his desire is to involve us 
His desire is for us to operate with faith, even faith the size of a mustard seed, and to put no matter how small or how little that we have into His hands, and for Him to turn it into something amazing. And I need to ask, my friends, are we operating with a myopic faith like Philip and Andrew over the situations in our life? Are we limiting God's ability and power in the things that we are dealing with? And are we doing God's work in our ministry, in our church, in the smallest way because we think that God is not able? The truth is, nothing is impossible with God. The issue is, do we really and truly believe in Jesus Christ? Some months back, you remember that I shared how in 2015, we lost 30 Anglican church buildings in two earthquakes in Nepal. And I have also mentioned back then that it cost uh, 50000 each to rebuild the church. You do the sums, you know how much that will come up to. On top of that, we have to feed thousands of people who are hungry for months because they have lost their income, they have lost their, their livelihoods. And we have to provide temporary shelters for many. And with 8,000 members looking to the leadership for direction and comfort, I remember saying to them, we will believe in Jesus. But you know what, my dear friends? But deep in my heart, I didn't believe. I remember saying to God, God, this is impossible. This is a mission that is impossible. 30 church buildings, 50,000 each, so many mouths to feed. We're going to take years to raise those funds to rebuild the churches. And I remember one morning, I was doing my quiet time praying and I heard God saying to me, Son, do you not believe in me? Son, do you not believe in me? I was seeing the problem that I have to deal with that was much bigger than our God. And that was my issue and I, and I repented and I was on my knee crying out to God and praying, God, truly have mercy. Help me with my unbelief. And the moment I turned from unbelief to belief, I witnessed the greatest and the most powerful miracle in my life. People gave, people pledged, and we raised all the sum that we needed to rebuild the churches in two weeks. God is amazing, my dear friends. Amen. And I share this testimony to constantly remind myself and to share with us that nothing is impossible with God. The question is, do we believe? Thirdly, we want to look at the boy. The boy saw the signs and operated with faith. Verse 9, Andrew reported, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. It was common during Jesus' time for people to pack and carry with them right uh, ration of food whenever they were traveling on a long journey. So we shouldn't be surprised to find the loaves and fish on the boy. Barley loaves are very small uh, bread loaves, cheap and unrefined. And they were meant for animals in those days. People then fed their donkeys and mules with barley loaves, and they became the diet for the poor. The boy also had two fish. In Greek text, we are told that these are dried fish of what is equivalent to our preserved fish today, something that I, I really enjoy. And you need to know that the five barley loaves and two fish in this context is considered to be insignificant in the eyes of many. But for the young boy, it would have meant a lot to him. It was perhaps everything for him. And that's the reason why Andrew responded this way. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they? What are they for so many? 
Also in those days, you, when you're out on a long journey, your food ration is more important than money, and travellers will guard their ration with their lives more than their goods and their money from robbers. You can live without money, but you can't live without food in those days because there are no food kiosks along the way during the journey. So as a result, you don't go around showing off to people, telling people, hey, look, I have five loaves and two fish. So many scholars agreed that the boy must have overheard the conversation between our Lord and the disciples. And he had willingly took out on his own accord and offered up to the Lord his five loaves and two fish with the intention that Jesus would somehow miraculously use it to bless the multitudes who were gathered that day. And what took place next was mind-blowing. Jesus ordered them to sit down. The men sat down, about 5,000 in numbers, and noticed that they had counted only the men, 5,000 of them. And scholars estimated that there were most likely about fifteen to 20,000 men, women and children, who were gathered that day. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and he distributed them through his disciples to those who were seated, and so also the fish, as much as they wanted. They ate to the full that day. And in verse 12, when they had eaten their few, Jesus told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled up 12 baskets full with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. And although the disciples had not anticipated the miracle, our Lord invited them to be a part of this miracle, to distribute the multiplied bread and fish to the people. And now they were asked to collect the leftovers. And 12 basket food they collected. The Greek text tells us that these are huge baskets. And more importantly, we need to ask the question why the Lord asked the disciples to gather up the leftovers. Besides the fact that there should be not be food wasted, there are two important spiritual lessons for the disciples and for us today. Firstly, we should never doubt Jesus' divine ability and power. We need to believe who Jesus says he is. And we need to believe that he is bigger and more powerful than all the challenges that we may face in our life. Secondly, even our mustard seed-sized faith can move mountains. Do not hold back, my dear friends, from offering to the Lord our five loaves and two fish, no matter how insignificant that may be. But to operate with the, that small, mustard-sized faith, to believe that Jesus can miraculously use it to bless the multitudes. Let me conclude. Scripture tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God, Hebrews 11. And faith is developed when we believe that Jesus is the divine Son of God. And the key to faith is to believe. Are we like the crowd who saw but did not believe? Or are we like the disciples who saw but operated with a myopic faith? Or do we want to be like the small boy who saw and operated with a simple believing faith? Believing that Jesus can do amazing things in our lives and through us for his glory. What is your choice? And I want to say a little bit more how we are to apply what we have learned today to the season that we are in right now. And also to make sense of what the Lord is calling us to focus on, to build a deeper life in Christ. I'm sure we are all affected by the latest news on the increase in our community cases. We are reading the news every day and we, we are bombarded by news of how our neighbours are suffering. 
My question to us is, are we trusting God to take us through this challenging season? Or are we turning to men for solution? And have we slipped into a state of spiritual complacency and even know when this season of pandemic, life is still very much as usual? Perhaps there's something for us to reflect on, to examine if we are in this state of spiritual complacency. And Paul wants us in Ephesians 5, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise making the best use of time because the days are evil. And friends, because of all this, we need to come back to what the Lord is calling us to focus on in this season, to build a deeper life in Christ by knowing Jesus and by doing His will. Let us pray. Lord, strengthen our faith in you. Lord, we have feared to believe in your power and might, and we have feared to believe that in you all things are possible, and we have feared to place our trust in you. Instead, we have tried to fix things on our own, and Lord, we have feared to turn to you first. Instead, so often, we have turned to the world for answers and help. Forgive us, Lord. And now, Lord, we ask that you will help us with our unbelief. May you strengthen our faith for your glory. All this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord bless you. In response to the exposition of the word by the vicar, let us now stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as you are able for a time of intercessory prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning, and great indeed is your faithfulness. We ask, Lord, for you to continue to grant us hearts of thanksgiving as we gather in your presence, as we come to you in praise, in adoration, and in worship. Lord, we plead with you again concerning the continuing COVID pandemic. Our world is in the second year of this global pandemic and there continue to be new and more infectious strains affecting many countries. Lord, we pray for your grace and mercy, in particular for the nation of India, 
where infection rates and mortality rates are continuing at high levels. Lord, touch the nation of India with your divine hand. Grant decisiveness to the government and to the various authorities in addressing the steps to stem the massive scale of infections. We pray too for the frontline healthcare workers and also for the healthcare system that is finding difficulty coping with the sick and the suffering in this, in this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also, Lord, want to lift up the current situation here in Singapore and continue to pray for the government and the ministries <clears throat> in taking wise and proactive steps to curb the community infections. Lord, we pray to you to heal our land. We pray that this current period of reducing interaction, both at work and in social gatherings, will stop the cycle of infection in our community. We also want to pray for the Tan Tok Seng Hospital cluster and for healing for all who have been infected. We pray too for our cathedral, that as you have protected by your divine grace, that Lord, you will continue to protect our cathedral and our community. Lord, we pray too for our diocese and our deaneries and in particularly in our deaneries for Nepal with the current challenges and the rapid rise in COVID infections. May the churches in Nepal be a sanctuary for healing and hope. And we continue to pray for the protection of our clergy there, pastoral teams and congregations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we pray for our Congregations here at the cathedral, our English, Mandarin, and, and, and language service congregations. We ask you, Lord, for a continuing spirit of love and care as we currently adjust our worship schedules. Continue to grant wisdom to our vicar, Canon Lewis, and the clergy and pastoral leadership during this, these critical weeks. Today, Lord, we also commit to you the newly elected PCC. We pray especially and ask for wisdom and guidance for each one as we serve you in the new PCC year. We pray for unity, we pray for love, pray for grace, we pray for humility as we serve in the various areas of finance, administration and church ministry. We continue to ask you, Lord, to guide us in the work of the cathedral in reaching the lost and in serving the needy and the vulnerable. Continue, Lord, to strengthen us in your word so that every one of us here can serve you better. And Lord, we ask that you continue to empower us with the power of your Holy Spirit that your purposes will be accomplished. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Testing, testing. Please be seated. Very warm good morning to everyone. Welcome oh. to St. Andrew's Cathedral, all who are here and also all who are with us on live streaming. It's good to see you all today. As you are aware, Singapore is undergoing a heightened a period now of COVID awareness, a heightened awareness of the threat of COVID. And so because of this, I, I believe that many of us are actually asking, what is the impact on our church? Well, there's good news from MCCY. And the good news is that we can continue our services as usual. So from next weekend, there will be no suspension of services, but all our normal services will continue as usual. And these services will be capped at a maximum of 100 worshippers each. 100 worshippers, that is so that we do not have to do what is called PET, pre-event testing. And so that's good news, praise God. Also, next week, uh, 18th of May, we'll be having our church prayer meeting. It's called the Prayer and Praise. It'll be on Zoom. 
at 7.14 p.m. We ask you all to join us, and this will be a good time to pray for Singapore, pray for the nations. And of course, today is a very special day. It's Mother's Day, and we want to take this opportunity to pray for all mothers and also grandmothers. So if you are here, you're a mother, we ask you to please stand. I have to give a special mention for grandmothers because previously when I asked mothers to stand, grandmothers did not. And they said, we are not mothers, we are grandmothers. But no, actually you're mothers also. So can all the mothers please stand? We want to pray for you. Yes, praise God. And also if you're watching us with live streaming and you're a mother, can you also please stand so that we can pray? Let's join our hearts together. Those of us seated, let's just stretch out our hands and let's pray for all the mothers here. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we bless you for these ladies who are standing today. We bless you, Lord, that you have chosen them for a very special role, very special privilege. And Lord, you have blessed them to be a blessing. So Lord, we just continue to ask for your anointing upon them, give to them all joy, even as they bring up godly children and grandchildren, give to them the joy of motherhood and help them, Lord, to just pass on the faith to the future generations. Strengthen them. Bless them, Lord. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Church, it is my great joy today to commission the newly elected PCC members. First, allow me to introduce them to you. We have our Vickers Warden, Mr. Keith Chua, our People's Warden, Dr. Joseph Tambaya, our Secretary, Dr. Stanley Lai, our Treasurer, Mr. Chan Keng Thik, our PCC members, Mr. Andrew Goh, Mr. Robin Tan, and Ms. Felicia Ma, Ms. Karen Chua, Mr. Jonathan Chan, Mr. Eric Lee, Mr. Adrius Tan, Mr. Philip Lim, and we also have Dr. Michael Lim, who is unable to join us today. The parochial church council assists the vicar in leading the church community to do God's will, to his glory and honour. And your duties and responsibilities include the stewardship and care of the finances, personnel, and properties of this cathedral church. And I ask of you, therefore, members of the parochial church council, in the presence of God, and this congregation, will you faithfully and diligently discharge your responsibilities as members of the parochial church council of this cathedral church. The wardens will respond on behalf of God. Will you be faithful in prayer and the reading of the Holy Scriptures to know the will of God in all your decision making? We will, we will with, with the, the help, help of God. God. Will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? We will, with the help of God. Will you do your best to put pattern your life and that of your family in accordance with the teachings of Christ, so that you may be wholesome examples to all people? We will, we will with the help of God. Will you in all things seek not your own glory, but the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ? We will, we will with, the with the help of God. God. And members of St. Andrew Cathedral and those who are here and those watching on live stream, you elected these members. Will you uphold them as they serve the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church? We will. Thank you. And now I commission you all as St. Andrew's Church, parochial church council members, and may the Lord by His grace uphold you in the service he lays upon you. The church wardens represents the whole congregation on both parochial and diocesan occasions. Church wardens, will you care for this church which you represent and be faithful stewards of God's household? We will, we will the Lord, Lord be our, our helper. helper. Please join me, church, as we just pray for the PCC members. Heavenly Father, we ask for your sovereign grace the Holy Spirit, to fill each and every one of these PCC members, that we may, Lord, know your will, your desire, and to lead this church for your glory alone. So anoint each one, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Together, the PCC members and the wardens, we will say, Almighty God, God give, give us the, the grace to do the work, the work which, which you have called us. So, so direct, direct and empower and all your thoughts, words and deeds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may set your will ever before your eyes, and that we may give ourselves wholly to you through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the love of the Lord Jesus draws you to himself, and the power of the Lord Jesus strengthens you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fills your heart, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Church, I invite you to stand. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let's ex extend our peace to one another. Peace be with you. Receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Beloved in Christ, we have now come to the end of the service. If anyone here is in need of prayer, please proceed to the Graham White Library on your left, where there will be someone available who will pray with you and for you. Do remember to wipe down your seats at the end of the service uh, with the provided antiseptic wipe after the recessional hymn is over. And please be reminded that there should be no mingling after the service. Could we all now stand for the recessional hymn, O Zion Haste? 